First up, how are you feeling? Feeling all right. Are you better? Last year, the Commanders were a team that now stopped your undefeated streak. That and that. How much do you guys take off of that loss, and how much does extra motivation? Does that give you guys any extra motivation? You know, especially even though they're a division opponent. Yeah, no, I think um, you know, they're a great team, and they have uh, great players, and obviously you want to go into every game with a certain level of uh, intensity, um, and you know, respecting every opponent we play, and so uh, ready, ready for the opportunity to play against them. Jalen, what kind of energy is DeAndre bringing to the offense? Yeah, he's um, a very, um, very big time. You know, he's a big time playmaker. Big time playmaker. He's electric with the ball in his hands, and um, that's something that I've been able to witness since his days at Georgia. So he's he's been who he's who, who he's always been. Um, he's doing that for us now. You started the season against three defenses that all kind of you know have their own wrinkles and more exotic looks. I would say, I guess. How different is it preparing for an opponent that you've seen a lot, you know, that runs the defense that you, you're a little bit more familiar with? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, again, you know, everybody has their their own way of being versatile and um, have showing different looks. You know, I think the reality is, regardless of who we're playing, it's just about how we execute. And so we just want to prepare to execute at a high level. Jalen, you've had the good fortune of playing behind some pretty intense fan bases in Alabama, Oklahoma, and now here. What kind of advantage or help does it give you when you have the amount of people that traveled this past week to Tampa and what you get when you play at the link? Yeah, um, you know, you, you always appreciate that for sure. You know, and it comes in handy, uh, whether you're going to Arizona, usually all the nice places, you know, the fans <laughs> like to travel to. Smart about it. Um, but, you know, we appreciate it and it definitely uh, pays off in the end. As far as the red zone offense, what would you like to see get better? I was going to ask that a little bit. Uh, Nick earlier kind of took responsibility saying he hasn't put you guys in the best position when you get to the red zone. What's your take on it? Yeah, I think it's about, you know, finishing drives and scoring points. Um, it's our job to execute whatever it's called, you know, and um, we've had a number of opportunities to do that. And so uh, we just need to put it in, put it in the end zone. Yeah, and that long drive at the end of the game, um, what's that like to be – in the huddle for that and, and keeping the, the clock moving like you guys did. Yeah, I know that is um, depleting for an opposing team to hold the ball for that long and run it like we did and be fishing and convert on, on first downs and whatnot. So um, obviously, you know, I, I like to not be in a four minute situation at the end of the game and just open it up earlier. But um, you know, we, we executed well when we when we had to in that situation. You guys have had a high level of success running the quarterback sneak the way that you guys do. Uh, what is it about your skill set that lends to the success of that play? Um, I don't think it's, it's done too much. It's something I've done since I was in high school. Um, obviously, you got those big guys up front. That makes it uh, a lot easier um, just getting that yard. How important is timing in, in that play? Is that maybe like an under – you know, valued uh, part of it. I'm not wanting to break it down as much as everybody else is. I'm the guy that's doing it. So just get the first down. It's as simple as that. There's been arguments that the play ought to be banned. What do you think of that? I have no thoughts on it. Yeah. Only only, we're the only people that's doing it as well as we are. You know, try to guy want to be hurt for it too. But. I asked you about the touchdown pass OZ after the game. You mentioned that you wanted to see the film. When you watched the film, what stood out to you about that play? Um, yeah, I think – I just think, you know, I was able to stay in the, stay in the pocket. And, um, you know, O-line did a really good job of holding up. OZ continued on his route throughout the progression and um, ended up making a big-time play. There was a huge play in the game. What about Lane on that play? I mean, he's one-on-one -on -one all the time. He's asked to be one-on-one -on -one all the time. And that, by my count, seemed like it was five, five and a half seconds to have to hold up. Yeah, he's, a, he's the best at his job. You know, he's the best at his job. And um, obviously you have plays where um, you may not do it the way you want to do it, but, you know, he, he's always challenging himself to do it at a high level, and he's very good at that. What is the uh, the Washington defense showing you on tape, Kale? Um, you know, I think they're fast. Um, Obviously, the the front the front seven the D line that they have uh, they're very disruptive there, um, 
and I think their DBs are, are really good. They play the ball well, and they track the ball well. So, um, you know, a familiar opponent, obviously, but a, you know, a great team that has gave us challenges in the past. So we just got to be ready to execute. Speaking of OZ, what has he brought to this offense since Quez has been out with his injury, and what type of guy is he like, you know, with most of the guys in the offense? Yeah, I think, you know, he's a guy that comes in and just, you know, puts his, puts his best foot forward, works really hard, um, and, and it's for the team. You know, he's a guy that, um, obviously, if he's not in that first three or in that slot position coming out, you know, he's staying after, trying to get extra work in. We're doing routes, um, catching up on that because there, there'll come a time where everybody, you know, has to play, you know, and it's a beautiful part about team sports is um, everybody kind of dominating and mastering their role. That's what we work for. And so, you know, he had a big, he had a big time uh, showing last week, and he'll continue to show up for us. Dallas gave the opinion that the three defenses you face so far are probably the most exotic um, that you'll face all year. How beneficial is that, uh, you know, to kind of, you know, add to your memory bank as you, as you move forward the rest of the yeah, year? I think it's all beneficial. Um, everything is beneficial. You know, um, I try and simplify it as much as I can, and I think that's the approach you have to have, playing this position. You know, um, you want to execute. So it's just about executing. It's about it's about what you do, you know. And so you get different looks. You see different schemes and play against guys with different philosophies. And you know, you, you learn from those things. You learn from the good. You learn from the bad. And you just kind of grow and, and move forward with it. But um, I think that's the the beauty of experience. If I can circle back on the touchdown pass. What dictates whether you stay in the pocket, like you said, or you extend that play? Um, it's a field thing. Good thing. Simple as that. Recently, Bryce Harper was talking about um, being part of like a sports fraternity in Philadelphia and watching you guys. And you know, the other days wearing Eagles socks when he's playing. What's it like for you to watch them now as they embark on another postseason run? And do you get a sense of what's going on? I realize you're the main thing's the main thing, but for a lot of fans, the Phillies is part of the fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they've they've done a really good job over there, getting the opportunity to meet them in the off season. And um, as things heat up, you know, in the playoffs, we definitely got our eye out. We're supporting um, and rooting them and wishing them nothing but the best. Hopefully, uh, you know, we can all finish it off. Take two more. Yeah, over the course of your career, even even when you were young, maybe playing with your dad, did it, did it take you any time to get to the point as a player where you were evaluating yourself in terms of the, the team, first and foremost and only? You know, like, in our jobs, we might look at a quarterback and say, okay, well, he threw for 330 yards and three touchdowns, but his team lost. And therefore, he's good, but you can't look at quarterback wins as a stat because the guy played great, his team lost, and it's not his fault that he lost. You seem not, seem not to care about that stuff. You're all about, did the Eagles win, did they not win? How did you get to that point? By losing. Did it take any instruction, advice from your dad, coaches, anything other than you just saying, I don't like to lose, period? No, I think it's as simple as that. Um, you come up short, you learn from it, and you, you ask yourself what's more important.